Alright everybody, welcome back to the Elite Network. I'm Minnie Fox and my special guest today is Lewis Skywalker Clark. And oh my goodness, we've been having a good time talking about Las Vegas. And the amazing things that we do here in the music industry to make people feel good, uh, lift their spirits, and um, in the community, Lewis, yes. the young people that often have had an opportunity to see you, because you, you don't just perform in a nightclub or at the casinos, but you've performed with your group in demand in areas where young people can actually see you. And you always do those feel-good songs where any age range would be able to handle. Tell us on a perspective from being a father, how do you feel about allowing a young person to experience music as a way of opening up their horizons to the world? That's a great question, Minnie. Um, you know, as parents, we, we oftentimes uh, try to steer our children away from um, uh, some of the things that we've had a hard time with in our lives. Mm -hmm. And then on the, on the other side, we also look at ourselves as consultants to our children, right? And uh, one of the reasons I decided to um, endeavor into the music industry as deep as I have uh, is because of um, looking at uh, previous artists' careers and how they were maybe misled in some ways. Mm -hmm. And so by having this hands-on deal, dealing with uh, the music industry head, head, you know, head up, um, I can share the truth with uh, someone aspiring to get into the entertainment field. Uh, as far as m my children, all of them sing. I mean, they love to entertain. Mm -hmm. um, and I want them to know the right way to go about it. You know, now that they have somebody to lean on. See, when I was singing, uh, there was nobody for me to lean on. So it came to me, hard luck, right? I had to go through the bumps and the bruises uh, to gain today's understanding. I even took myself back to school. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about a little later. And, um, uh, and I'm still furthering my education with regards to uh, music. Okay. Um, well, but let's, so, yes. let's, let's pick up there. We're, okay. You're furthering your education in this spectrum of your life. And so many young people, when they come out of high school, college isn't for them. And they say college isn't for everybody, although we all need that little piece of paper, whether it's a certification, it's your high school diploma, it may be an AA, a PhD, your bachelor's, or your master's degree, but you still need that little piece of paper at some point. So Lewis is an example of, it doesn't matter how old you are, it's where you are and what it is you're trying to do. But in this music industry, when a young person, the young rappers, or the young R&B artists, or the soul sexy girls come out and they start performing, what, what would be your advice to avoid an industry? Because there's no secret that the music world or entertainment is always a roller coaster. But there's ways to avoid certain things in that spectrum. And you're absolutely right, Minnie. Um, maybe 15, 20 years ago, uh, you, a lot of upcoming artists would hear that the music business is 10% uh, show, 90% business. And, you know, yeah, we can look at it like that. But today, being in the business myself, I can tell you for certain, for this entertainer, is 1% show, 99% business. You got to have the business side of, the, uh, of, of your endeavor if you're planning on making this uh, a livelihood. If you want to pay your bills, you know, and things like that, you want to understand your business. So for me, uh, what I did was I took myself back to school and uh, I just graduated. I just received my bachelor's degree in global business management. And I'm going to further my education. I, uh, uh, I'm going to go to Berkeley in Boston uh, sometime in 2017. And I finished my master's up in music composition, right? So um, there's a lot of things. If you're really serious about uh, the music industry and making it a livelihood for yourself, uh, you need to take some of these things in uh, consideration, especially the business side, because you're going to be dealing with a lot of uh, shady people. Well, you know, they say, let's pause for the cause. We're going to pause for the cause right now. And we are just going to take our hats off to you, our hands. We're going to break a leg, and we're just going to toast to the fact that you went back to school. Not only did you go back to school, you made a major accomplishment where you're going to be able to help people help themselves in this industry by yourself being on a whole nother level.
So we're gonna pick up our little glass over here, and we're gonna have our toast. Little session glass there. Right. Yes, it is. Don't worry, it's not champagne. It's apple cider. That's how we get down here on the Elite Network. Yes, we do. Toast to Mr. Lewis Skywalker and all the wonderful things that he's doing. So we're gonna take a moment and have a sip, sip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. I was a little parched there, right? Mm -hmm. One moment. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I'm just having fun here. But Lewis, I need to hear from you. And I, and I oftentimes ask, inquire of many of my guests this one question. In high school, there's so much peer pressure. But when you get in college, there's more peer pressure. But when you're in the industry, the entertainment world, yes. and I mean singing, modeling, acting, dancing, you know, they got the, they don't do the casting couch so much anymore. They call it some other things now. And when one is faced with an objective, and this objective is drugs, alcohol, um, doing some things you probably wouldn't do that maybe would demoralize you, but you got involved because you felt if you didn't, your career would go nowhere. And you've been able to do this industry successfully without it. What is your advice for those young people that are out there that's facing that? What could you suggest that they do to be able to avoid it and still be successful? That's a good question. That is a good question. Um, I like how he thinks all my questions are very good. That, 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 that is very, very interesting. Right? interesting. He very interesting. Me that um, yes. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I've always learned that a smart man learns from his own mistakes. But a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you just pay attention to uh, your peers, and you ask them, "Well, how did you, how did you fall into that uh, the alcohol or the drugs or uh, that uh, kind of lifestyle?" And and you learn. You you hear what they have to say, because uh, uh, and and be grateful because a lot of the people that who you might want who you might have wanted to. Uh, find out more about or about uh, what took them out that way are no longer here. See, a lot of us don't make it back. And so it's really, really important to ask questions, you know, to learn. So um, be inquisitive, you know, ask those questions. Um, some people, the people who make it back um, and still are in their right minds, uh, find out, you know, how they felt. That's what you want to know, how they felt. Not so much as uh, where it took them, because we all know where it's going to take us, you know. It's, you're going to either end up in a jail or institution or dead, you know. So you want to be uh, sure, you want to be specific with the questions that you ask. So don't, don't um, hold back, you know. Keep it real. Keep it real. That is real important, and, and many times our, our children forget that. Those words, keep it real. Thank you, Lewis. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to break for a commercial real quick so you can see what's going on in Viva Las Vegas. And we'll be right back after this break.